It's Fabio Choa, and I'm kicking it with the OG Tampa Mystic on the Industry Most Wanted podcast. What's wrong with him? In your bushes, letting off shots, nigga. That's World War Three. I keep the two two threes and that Vinnies, nigga. Like World War Three, dropping them nuclear bombs on niggas' heads, nigga. Like World War Three, they get a beef with me, you rest in peace, nigga. That's World War Three, guns reloaded, killing off my opponents. I know. Hey, what's going on, man? It's your girl, Tampa Mystic, and we are live on the Industry's Most Wanted Podcast. Podcast. Boom. We got Ohio in the building, right? Yeah, Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio. I think we already discussed this. We might be cuck cuck because my family from Cleveland. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm your light-skinned cousin. No matter what, we family anyway. (laughs) Nah, we family straight like that. Give me some love, man. Thank you for being here. Yeah. And I also wanted to thank you for coming and being a part of Bigger Rankin's uh, birthday bash as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was legendary. Yeah, it it was. And you made it more legendary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) You got to come out and support a real legend. Nah, for real. We got to give him his flowers. Yeah, Yeah, while he's still here so yeah. you know without further ado man go ahead and give us that official introduction hey man i'm fabio choa aka mr what's wrong with him and i'm kicking it with og tampa mystic on the industry most wanted podcast what's wrong with him? Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> well listen again thank you for being here um you know i just want people to understand what you got going on you and i have been connected for a long time but this is our first chance and opportunity to sit down and actually have like this type of conversation yeah um you grew up in cleveland yeah what was it like, man? Take us back to your childhood when you was a jit, man. What was it like um, growing up out there? Rough, you know, rough trial childhood, you know what I'm saying? Um, mother and father um, going through drugs and things like that. So it um, pushed me out to be a hustler at an early age, you know. By 10 years old, I was off the porch. Okay. Into the streets. Yeah. And uh, into a fast lifestyle. Yeah. And so uh, it just was crazy for me. So I had to adapt real quick. So I became a grown up. Yeah, you grew up at a young as a youngin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't seen it all. It ain't nothing I ain't seen. So let me ask you this: You know, having that you went through that experience, that, like you said, you know, family involved in you know drugs to some extent. We ain't got to get too deep into that. Yeah. Like you said, you jumped off the porch early at ten years old. Would you change if you could go back and change anything about that? Would you? No, because it made me who I was. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you got to go through the pain to get to the to the happiness on it and really understand life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it motivates you in a way. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes I know people wish you had more, but when you go through that adversity, it, it, it makes you want to be a man of your own. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's why a lot of kids now they had it given to them they don't want to be no man or hold no accountability. I think that made me hold more accountability uh, for me going through so much. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that's something that we have to talk about all the time is accountability because, like, OG Bigger always says, stop pointing the finger and start pointing the thumb. Like, take mm-hmm. accountability for our own stuff because yeah. oftentimes – we are quick to blame it on other people why stuff don't work out for us. Yeah. But it's really us standing in our own way. Yeah, you control your own destiny. Absolutely. And everybody's journey is different, so we yeah. can't compare ours to someone mm-hmm. else's. Just because he might make it up quickly, it might take us a little bit longer or vice yeah. versa. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. No, that's dope. Um, also, too, you know, growing up in Cleveland, um, did that have an influence on you at all to get involved in the music industry? Yeah, because when I, when I was young, I used to rap about my pain. Yeah. I used to rap about my mother and my father getting high on drugs. Yeah. And if you listen to my music, I talk about me selling drugs, but then I also talk about the remorse of selling drugs. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of different things, different levels to it, but that's why I started doing music. I used to sit in my room, and I just used to just write a lot of stuff and then freestyle. I yeah. never would stop. And even when I was hustling, I would be in the car listening to instrumentals, and that's how I used to come up with music. Yeah. yeah. You had a lot to talk about because, again, yeah. you went through a lot. Let me ask you this, you know, being that your your parents were involved in drugs, again, we ain't got to get too deep in it. Do you think if it had been the opposite and they weren't, you would still be out there in the street selling drugs? Maybe not. Yeah. Not, maybe if my father wasn't. Yeah. You know, I come up under after my uncle. So yeah. I had one uncle that was a hustler and the other one that used but I choose to follow behind my uncle that was the hustler that yeah. had a lot of money. He had the nice cars. He had everything. Yeah. So that's why I say when people listen to my, 
well, it's a song I ain't got out. It ain't out yet. But um, I say, I ain't want to be like Mike. I want to be like T. Yeah. He had that pearl white legs with the cocaine seats. And uh, that's who I wanted to be like. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that's what I, that's who I followed. That was my role model. Yeah. yeah. And you need that, absolutely, because, you know, if you had followed in Pop's footsteps, it could have went all the way left. Yeah. You had an uncle. Your uncle was a hustler. But, but what's so crazy is my father helped my uncle get because my father was a hustler. Yeah. But he started like stealing, stealing cars and getting high. Yeah. But he had already showed my uncle the game, and then my uncle just blew up and became this enormous, as you say, mythic drug lord. Yeah. Understood. I mean, and, and, you know, everybody goes through different adversities in life. We go through different situations. Some people just get caught up in a situation that yeah. winds up where they have a habit or they end up getting locked up. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But it doesn't mean they're necessarily a bad person. They oh, just no, got caught no, up no, in a no. bad situation. My, my mother had game. Yeah. So, so even when I started hustling, my mother taught me the game. Yeah. Like she felt like, oh, I can't give you all this money, but I'm going to show you the right things I and love the right it. people and how to adapt to it. So it's like, it was like a gift and a curse, but at the same time, she gave me the game. Yeah. She didn't try to hide nothing from me. She didn't try to keep nothing a secret from me. You know, we used to ride around in my car, and then she used to give me little jewels and tell me little things, how people would move and things they would do. She she taught you and instilled into you what every mother does for their son yeah. or their daughter because really at the end of the day, when you're a parent, you want your child to do better than you. Yeah. And that's what she wanted. Yeah. And because you went through the stuff that you did go through, you appreciate everything you have now so yeah. much more. Because anything I did, she supported. Yeah. You know, even when I started doing music, she would listen to my music. She knew my words, yeah. my songs word for word and things like that. Are your folks still in Cleveland? Yeah. That's dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still, we still got property in Cleveland, me and my brother. We got, we got houses and properties out there. I know that's right. That's yeah. what it's all about is having. Well, we stay, we stay where you, <laughs> where you from. We stay in Clearwater, Florida. Oh. Other people don't know that. Really? Yeah. That's crazy because I was born in Tampa, spent some time there, graduated from Clearwater High School. And then when I was, as soon as I graduated, I, I moved right back to Tampa again. And that's where I was living up until I moved here. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, so we just move around. We That's just, we, dope. We go from there to here, from Atlanta. <laughs> I got family in Atlanta, you know, and I still got deep rooted in Cleveland. Yeah. And uh, and I'm in Florida, but I plan on moving from Florida to move here. That's what I was gonna ask you next. Will you ever you'll relocate here to the ATL? Yeah. So that's what I, that's what we've been thinking about debating yeah. on. But it really like yeah, it's a go. That's dope, man. So about what age or maybe how long ago did music really start becoming that major passion for you? It's always well, been a passion. No, it's always been a passion but, since I was little. Right, I like, get that. But when did you really start taking it, like, seriously? Uh, I would say when my cousins and them got out the feds. Like, I always did music, and I, and I was recording songs, but I wasn't putting them out. Yeah. So what happened was around, like, 2000 and I want to say 2004, my cousin get out from the feds, they start a record company, and I start going with them. Yeah. And from me going with them, I ended up getting into other doors, you know, far as, like, a lot of people don't know I was a ghostwriter. So I talk about this, but I signed a non-disclosure. Yeah. So I ghostwrited for celebrities and stuff. I went to a music conference in Miami, and I got picked. Dope. And um, they set me in a room with, like, five different writers, and we would write verses and hooks, and whoever had the best one, they would put it together. And, uh, yeah, I was into that. And that that lasted from, like I say, 2005 to 2011. And so from then, I, w I you know, I used to think I was being blackballed, you know, from the things that I did because I'm yeah. like, dang, I should have been in the industry by now. Yeah. But it wasn't working that way, you know what I'm saying? But my little brother that's passed away in 2014, mm. Me, him, and my and my brother right there, we started a record company called My Art Music Group. Yeah. And my brother, basically, he went to school and he learned everything about LLCs, businesses. And so we was funding behind it, you know. Yeah. And that's when the journey had started. That's dope. Yeah. Were they at your cousins that you said that came out of the feds, they was in Cle based in Cleveland? Yeah. That's dope. Yeah, yeah. That's good, man. They got up out of there and, and turned things around, man, yeah. and, and did a lot of positive yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff. I mean, they, they do a lot of good stuff now. Like, they got 
clubs, property, and stuff like that. They ain't into the music. Like now that they see I'm in it. Yeah. Yeah. They so jump back in it. <laughs> let's let's run down because you wear a lot of hats. You do a lot of stuff yeah. besides you know just being a funny guy yeah. on Instagram and yeah. making music. What all do you do? Run down through all the hats that you wear. Well, um, as you know, I'm funny. Yeah. So. The funny stuff, I've always been funny since I was little. Yeah. Um, but my little nephew and my niece brought that out. Yeah. Like, a lot of people don't know. I started, I got on Instagram because of my brother. Okay. Like, a lot of people don't know. I don't like iPhones. So, I always tell this story. I keep. A, <laughs> I got a flip phone, and I keep a flip phone in my pocket. So, if a person, if I really going to talk to you, it's going to be on this. Okay. What kind of phone is that? Huh? It's a flip phone. No, but, well, like, what brand? <laughs> I don't even know. It's, it's none. <laughs> it's a none. It's a none. flip phone. You know, because I remember back in the day they had the Motorola razors. I used to love them phones back in yeah. the day, the little flip phones. But um, yeah, I, um, my little nephews Bub and my niece Layla, and uh, what happened was my brother told me that I need to get an Instagram to promote my music. Yeah. And what made me really do it was I was trying to get a girl in a video. And she was like, what's your Instagram? I'm like, I ain't got one. And she's <laughs> like, oh, you ain't doing no you ain't doing no, uh, no music for real. Yeah. And then they, they bagged out getting in the video. But them same girls, when I blew up, they came trying to get in anything It'd that I was It always be doing. like that, yeah. So, um, yeah, so the comedy stuff came from my nephew. What happened was I always said that saying. I got that saying from when I was, um, when I used to be hustling. Yeah. Uh, um, a, a J brought me a vase, but it was an urn. It was a marble, and it had gold, and it had a lock on it. Yeah. And I told him, like, man, it's, a, it's an urn. What's yeah. wrong with him? <laughs> you know? And then it went from it Is went there from somebody that. ashes in it? Yeah, yeah, it was somebody ashes in it. And he, he used to bring me all type of stuff, like soap, deodorant, <laughs> just giving me deals and coming with clothes, polo. <laughs> Everything, you know. But hold on, pause for just to pump your brakes for a second. He brought you some of these urn with some of these ashes. Whose and, body and, was inside of it? I don't know, but he, he thought that it was money in it uh, and it was gold. He was like, man, you could just go ahead and open it up yourself and um, you could get whatever in there. Just give me this for it. Because hey. he couldn't get it open. <laughs> but the whole oh, time, Lord. It, it, it was an urn, and I told him that it was an urn, you know. You know, stole somebody's ashes. Yeah. <laughs> so they probably broke in somebody's house that yeah. probably been vacant. Maybe they had passed away, and, you know, right. somebody inherited a house and wasn't just there a lot of times. I That's a know. wild story. I ain't never heard one like that before. <laughs> <laughs> That'll yeah. definitely make you say, what's yeah. wrong with them? Yeah. You done brought me a whole person, so, a whole dead person. So that had happened, and then I was messing around on Instagram and I had my nephew record me and hold the phone and I did a reel. Okay. And I did a side by side reel. I started off doing side by side reels and it did good. Yeah. So then a lot of people don't know I do voiceovers. Yeah. So I started talking under the animals and the animals on TikTok was the first thing that went viral for me. Give me one real quick. I'm going to put you on the spot. Give me one of your animal voiceovers. I got to hear it. No, I want you to do it live right now. <laughs> not no, don't not no digging no, on your no, phone. No, because I I like way I freestyle it. So it's like I can't I can't remember, but it was the one. It's Roar the one like with a the lion. cat. Roar it's, like a lion, no, real no, quick. No, no, no. It was one. It was one with a cat, and I was like, um, meow. No, nah, I, I wasn't doing no meows. I wasn't doing that. But were you making, purring? What were no, you doing? I'm, I'm making you talk like a human. I'm like, just messing. I'm just messing with you. Yeah. So. Yeah. So no, nah, that's dope. Yeah, I just started talking under the animals. And then, like I say, that started going viral. So, like, something like Ha Ha Davis be doing. Yeah. I got you. But, Understood. I thought but, you was talking like an actual animal voice. Yeah. My bad. No, no, no. Yeah, but but I was I was kind of like doing it. Be If you look at my video, I was doing it before them. Yeah. You know, um, the my pages was getting taken. I had a, I had a TikTok page that had like 60K on it. That was my first page that got taken. The reason why I got taken because I, on that same page, I started doing the stitching that everybody know me for. Yeah. And what's wrong with them? Yeah. But that came from my nephew. He t he was like, no, no, unk, no, don't do it. Don't do the side by side. Stitch it. And then my niece was like, yeah, stitch it, stitch it, stitch it, huh? Stick it. Because they call me cheesy. Yeah. He was like, stick it, stick it, Uncle Cheesy, stick it. So um, stitch it. So then I stitched it and it took off. Boom. 
So then I kept doing them like that. And my nephew, like, he had been in some of the skits with me. Yeah. And stuff like that. And my niece been in a couple. But she had normally, like, record me and stuff like that. And yeah. that's how I started saying my saying in the end. It was because of them. But I was around my favorite uncle. See, a lot of people don't know. That's why I believe it'd be d- divinely guided. Yeah. Because for some odd reason, I was stuck in Cleveland for a while. And I couldn't go back to Florida because I had things. I had to, It was just so much death going on. This happened. And the whole time that I'm there these months, my favorite uncle died. But the crazy mm. thing is, every morning I'm feeding him, right? I'm, you know, I get up in the morning, cook us some breakfast, and we'd just be laughing through the day, then I leave. Yeah. But this just, after I got what I had needed, like from them kids, from them showing me the TikToks and all of that, because I ain't know how to do it. Yeah. Then he passed away. Mm. So I knew, like, it was, like, meant for me to be there. Like, it was like, a, it, it, I can't explain it. It's just like I start realizing some stuff that happened in your life, it's a purpose, it's a reason why you're there. Like, I wouldn't have never did it. I wouldn't have never came up with the idea because I probably would have went back to Florida. I wouldn't have been with Bub. I wouldn't have been with Layla. So that's what brought me there was my favorite uncle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I was around him a lot, and that's what helped me, what people see today. If it wasn't for my favorite uncle and my niece and my nephew, they wouldn't even see none of that funny content. It wouldn't have came out. Man. And I got a lot of backlash from it from, like, a lot of my homies, a lot of people that I grew up with. They was like, man, that shit corny, man. Why you doing that shit, man? And then when I kept doing it, and they baby mama started liking it, and <laughs> girls, they like, then they start saying, oh, man, yeah, you got some. But one of my OGs from St. Clair, he called me on the DM. And he said, don't let these niggas trick you out of your position. Yeah. He said, you got something. Absolutely. And uh, from there, from that point, I knew I had something. You know what I'm saying? Because he came and he really made me sit down and think. And he just started talking about, like, all the people we lost, people that's in jail, people that's in the feds that I know that's never coming home. And he said, man, you got an opportunity to do something different. Yeah. You know, and, and he said, what you doing, you talented at doing it. He said, I ain't saying that. He said, nigga, you really be having me laughing. Like, you really got it. You know what I'm saying? He like, I don't know how you came up with it. But he said, keep doing it and don't let them trick you out of your position. Facts. So from that day forward, I just kept making content. And then I knew that I was so good at it that people don't even know. I make like 20 skits a day. Wow. So I got so many skits from last year, the year before, you know. That you haven't even put out that yet? That I ain't even put out. Like, so a lot of skits that I be seeing people do. I don't did them already, but I just ain't put them out fast enough. Yeah. I started just putting out one at a time, you know. I used to put out three to four a day. But then I started seeing, like, to me it was, like, oversaturating them. Yeah, absolutely. You got to let it breathe a little bit. Let each one get its proper due of attention. Yeah. Understood. Let me ask you this. You know, with you doing them skits and also doing music, do you ever feel like one outweighs the other, outshines the other on social media? Um. In a way, sometimes, because yeah. I feel like I put out more skits. Right. So then people don't see the music like that. Right, right. I asked that because at first I didn't know you did music when we yeah. first started talking. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It took me a minute because I seen all the funny videos. But I'm like, oh, he does music, too. So that's why I was I was wondering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like I say, music was my first passion. Yeah. But the crazy thing about it is my father is funny. And so remember when I tell you, I think things divinely got it. But this is just my thinking. Yeah. I just think that all the people I lost... They want me to showcase the talent that my father didn't show, of like, course. like my ancestors. That's yeah. how I be. That's how I be feeling, you know, to myself. Personally. I agree. Yeah, you know what I'm saying because they used to say my father could be the next Mike Epps and yeah and stuff like that, but he was into what he was into, and then I come back around can do the same thing. And the crazy thing about it, me and my father never been around each other that long. We only been around each other for like three years now. Yeah, you know, so because um, he was in prison all the other time. Yeah. And so um, from there, that's how I know, like, it's, it, like I say, it's divinely got it. Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Have you uh, taken the comedy to, like, another level, maybe, you know, uh, doing stand-up? Or have you thought about, you know, doing it in film or anything like yeah. that? Well, I thought about doing it in film. Yeah. And I thought about creating my own. Um, well, I got a lot of ideas. Yeah. Of creating my own YouTube channel with, you like, should. another female or something like that. And Get that shmoney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I got some ideas, and I know it'll work. Yeah. But, you know, when you're going in business with somebody and you've been doing it yourself, you got to make sure that y'all match and it don't break up. 
because what I learned is it mess ups the money. Listen, a hundred percent. Oftentimes I'm not against you having a partnership at all, but I'm with you on that. I've throughout my journey of doing this, I've had a couple different co-hosts and it never worked out. So I just said, you know what? I'm just going to do it myself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because could, it can hinder you, hold you back. It can mess with your money, all that. If they're yeah. not working at the same level that you are. Yeah. Cause you might outshine them and then they might think that they doing more than you doing. Yeah. You know, but they don't understand that it work hand in hand. And you got big energy like I do. So it's hard to find people who can actually handle that. You know what I'm saying? People yeah. get intimidated oftentimes by people who have big, big energy and you got big energy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, yeah, it, it happens like that all the time. <laughs> like I say, I talk to people and we have conversations about doing something. Yeah. And even with different people in my city that's that's funny that do skits. You know, they want to do skits with me. Yeah. And some of them I'm probably am. Yeah, of in course. The, in the near future. You know, I like what they got going on. Um, but right now it's just solely like me. And then sometimes I have certain cameos with different females and different people that uh, yeah. reach out to me. And um, I do some skits with them or stitch something that they sent me yeah. or stuff like that. Because they understand, like, if I stitch it on my page, they continue that same skit that they had continue to get seen. And a lot of people don't understand that. And that's what people on TikTok don't understand. Yeah. Like, I might have a friend that's from the LGBT community. Yeah. And they might send me a skit. And they might think, like, well, he ranking on somebody that's from us. Yeah. But it, but it ain't that. They send it to me for me to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. You're but, not You're not picking at that. You're yeah, just, you know, yeah. having fun with it. Yeah. And so, in their mind, they think I'm bullying. So, that's yeah. why my pages was getting taken down because they didn't realize that these people was my friends. They keep reporting it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and a lot of people be thinking it's Instagram. It's not Instagram. I don't care if it's Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook. It's somebody that's on there that's seen your video. And they hate it on your video. There, there's oftentimes people, and I'm not even saying like, you know, like the gay community, but it's just people, period, or they're too sensitive. It's trolls. They're trolling because they're either hating on what you got going on or they're just too doggone sensitive. It's like yeah. lighten up. It's, it's all in fun. Yeah. You know, you ain't out here bashing nobody. You're yeah. just having fun with it. What's the most recent single that's out there on the digital platforms that people can go uh, check out from um, you? Well, I got out World War Three now. That's what I'm... Um, I'm promoting right now. Okay. And then uh, I'm about to drop. That's a single or that's a project? World War Three. Well, it, it's a single. My, okay. My project that's coming out is called Legend of Voodoo. Mm. But I'm dropping a single before the Legend of Voodoo with me and PB Pluto called Tap In. Okay. So me and him got a song called Tap In. When is and, that releasing? Um, Hopefully by sometime next month okay so coming yeah. up soon coming up soon visuals gonna be in the works right yeah, yeah. we already shot the video oh, okay y'all be y'all be working <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah we don't shot the video in las vegas we had it lit out there at the at the um patio nightclub that's you dope know what I'm saying? turning up with big pbe you know what i'm saying we just connecting and networking man it's most definitely about to be a whole like my like my guy say it's gonna be a big movie <laughs> it's gonna be a movie now for a we ain't doing nothing little it's all big yeah. Big everything, everything, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, where can we catch you at next, bro? Um, everywhere. Yeah. Anywhere <laughs> he be I'm road running. Down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any, <laughs> anywhere they call me, you're going to catch me. Um, well, I do got something going on. I got something going on with God's show. I'm supposed to be shooting a video with him because I got a song with him too. Yeah. The one that got the song, No, For Real. Um, me and him connected. So um, that's a banger too. So I plan on going out to Texas shooting a video for that, and I'm going to be dropping that. That's going to be... My single after the tap. Yeah. Tap in. That's dope, man. I love everything you got going on. You have good energy. Yeah. You're very, very supportive of what other people do. Oh, yeah. That's what it's all about. See, people don't understand how the algorithm works. N when if you, I comment on your stuff, you need to comment back on your own post to me because that helps the algorithm. People yeah, don't understand yeah, that. But then they don't understand this. If I follow you, whoever you follow going to be suggest to follow me. And whoever I follow be suggest to follow you. So people be thinking they can do like the big rappers do and not follow nobody. Exactly. And delete everything off their page like they're a superstar <laughs> already. And that's why I say, what's wrong with People be so concerned about like keeping who they follow that number really, really low. Like I follow almost 4,000 people just yeah. because 
I, I fuck with so many people. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I just, you know, I want to see what I might miss some stuff because I follow so many people. But at the same time, it's like you want to support. Man, I, I say it all the time. You don't know who next. That's Only right. God know that. That's right. So then you look over somebody and be like, yeah, his song was cool. Yeah. But you ain't you ain't want to fuck with him. I, I've seen it happen. I've been you know? guilty of that. You know, now that's why I try to stay in tune with yeah. people got going so, on. So I don't pay attention just to one song or anything like that. Like, I support everybody. Yeah. You know, like even before PFE Mike Mike got signed with 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 Boom Man and them, he'll tell you I reached out to him first. I seen him, took a picture with him. I got a song with him that's coming out on my new project. Nice. So you know, I I just stay working. Like I can see talent, and I see people that's that's good at what they do. Yeah. And a lot of people overlook them. Yeah, you're you know absolutely what I'm right. Saying? And 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 I just see the specialness. Like it's just special ones that I just know. Like. He 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 got it. Yeah. He just need to be pointed in the right di- direction. Hundred yeah. percent. They need guidance. Yeah. That's what it is. Well, listen. I appreciate you taking time to stop through here. I know you brought your you know your people with you today, man. Yeah. Go ahead and uh you know tell everybody where you can follow. They can follow you at on your socials. Hey man, you can follow me at F A B I O O C H O A nineteen eighty one. Mister, what's wrong with you on Instagram, TikTok, on every platform? Straight like that, man. Yeah. Um, who you want to show some love to? Hey, man, I want to show love to Big PBE for coming out and support, man. My brother, Mayar Guava. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, everybody, man, that, that, that showed me love along the way. Even even Gorgeous. I got I to gotta shout out Gorgeous, man, because yes. Gorgeous always reached out to me, man. Gorgeous Put music. Put me on shows, platforms, <laughs> yeah. man. Hey, man, I just like people that's real and sincere. You know what I mean? Yeah, shout out yeah. to Kane as well. Yeah, out there. Kane. Breadwinner Kane, my Bread guy. Breadwinner Kane, that's my guy. You see, yeah. I still got my cups up there that yeah. he brought through. <laughs> Straight like that. Yeah. Um, and I want to shout out Authentic Empire. I want to shout out David Clinton. You know what I'm yeah. saying? My dude, Booking with Bones. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, always support me, showing me love. You know what I mean? Hey, man, it's up from here, man. They know what's going on with me. Big AE, most definitely. Yeah. Um, last but not least, we live right here. Industry's yeah, most industries. wanted. Boom. Most Go ahead and let them know what makes you the industry's most wanted. What make me most wanted? Because <laughs> I'm unstoppable and I'm Mr. What's wrong with <laughs> Straight like that. <laughs> I feel sick, COVID-19 I was in the house watching the news What was the crime scene? Unsolved mystery, the way I'm